Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Snippets, where today we're going to take a quick look at a verse in the Bible and we're going to try to understand what God meant by that which God said. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me now to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and we're going to read verse 21 where we are told, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. What exactly was the Apostle Paul and the power of the Spirit saying to those people in the church there in Corinth? It's real simple. Worldly philosophy had crashed into that church in Corinth. Greek philosophy had crashed into that church in Corinth. Corinth, located in the southern part of Greece in the region of Achaia, very close to Athens. Athens, the intellectual, philosophical capital of Greece. Well, Greek philosophy, worldly philosophy, human wisdom had crashed into that church and Paul had to get the Christians in that church straight. Don't rely on man's wisdom. Rely on God's wisdom. And Paul here in verse 21 shows the contrast between man's wisdom and God's wisdom. Again, verse 21, at the beginning. For since in the wisdom of God, the world, through its own wisdom, do you see the contrast? The world, through its wisdom, did not come to know God, could not come to know God. Why? Because God is infinite in his being and perfection. God is transcendent. God is majestic, holy, holy, holy. Do you actually think that we, finite humans, could grasp the infinite divine triune God on our own? What? Do you think that we as finite fallen humans could actually make our way to God through our wisdom? Not a chance. Verse 21, Paul was saying, since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, well then how is it that somebody can come to know God? God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to say those who believe. Wait a second, Andrew. What do you mean the foolishness of the message preached? Here we go. God in his wisdom looks at man's wisdom and says that's foolishness. Man in his wisdom looks at God's word and says it's foolishness. We're talking about unregenerated people. They look at God's word and they call it foolishness. In the Greek, moros, moronic. In fact, just say here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Paul says, a natural man, a person who is not regenerated by the Holy Spirit, a person who's still dead to God in the spiritual realm, a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, the Word of God, for they are moros to him. He can't understand them. He is spiritually dead. Do you see it? And so, back to our verse in chapter 1. 
God in his wisdom? He sees the world and its supposed wisdom? <laughs> God scoffs at that. Man thinking. Unregenerated man thinking. He doesn't need God. He doesn't need God's word. He doesn't need God's grace. He, through his human philosophical wisdom, can somehow reach that state of whatever they're reaching for. Nirvana, uh, you know, whatever. Peace, whatever. God laughs at that. God, in his wisdom, looks at man's human wisdom. You know what God says about that? That's moros. But isn't it interesting? Man in his wisdom. He looks at the wisdom of God through the word and man laughs at God. He considers it moros. Okay, I understand. Paul is saying to the Corinthians, enough of this human philosophical wisdom, enough of Greek philosophy, rely on God's word. But then how are people saved? If finite man on his own and through his own wisdom cannot grasp or comprehend or reach the infinite, perfect and pure, most holy God, if man in his wisdom cannot comprehend God, cannot come to God, how is a man saved? Again, the middle of verse 21. God was well pleased through what man considers the foolishness of the message preached, the word, to save those who believe. Do you see it? Listen, before we were saved, all of us considered God's word foolishness. Moros. Because the natural man, as we saw in chapter 2, considers the things of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, inspired the Word of God, considers the things of the Spirit as foolishness, moros. So before we were saved, hey, you want to read the Bible? <sighs> Come on. What am I going to do with the Bible? Anybody relate? Hey, you want to read the Bible? Ah, yeah, there's all kinds of contradictions in there. That was written by man. There's all kinds of mistakes. Can anybody relate? We all consider God's word moros. And yet God, in his wisdom, uses the very thing that non-believers consider moros, moronic, God uses the very thing, His Word, the message preached, to save them. <laughs> right? So that no one can boast. No human, with all his philosophical wisdom and knowledge and blah, 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 no human can ever boast and say, look how I through my wisdom, through the world's wisdom, look how I made it to God. Nope. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not, could not come to know God, God was well pleased through what the world considers the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Verse 22, Paul says, For indeed, Jews ask for a sign. Greeks search for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, that's a stumbling block. To the Gentiles, moros, foolishness. But to those who are called the elect, both Jews and Greeks, it is Christ, the power of God, the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God, according to the world, is wiser than men. And the weakness of God, you know, according to the world, is stronger than men. Christian, the very thing that you and I used to consider moros, God used the proclamation of the message about Christ. <laughs> the Holy Spirit worked through that to regenerate us and to bring us to Christ. How amazing is God's wisdom? 
And how deserving is God to be exalted?